If you love all of the magic and romance of Christmas in Scotland, Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan will jingle your bells. Hello, Swoon Squad. Welcome to While You Are Reading, a podcast for contemporary romance readers. I'm your host, USA Today bestselling romantic comedy author, Lisa Daly. On today's show, I am so excited. We are going to be talking with Jenny Colgan about her charming Christmas love story, Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop. Now, Jenny is a New York Times bestselling author of numerous novels, including The Christmas Bookshop, The Bookshop on the Corner, and The Beach Street Bakery. Jenny, her husband, and their three children live in a castle in Scotland, which I think is so cool. Welcome. Hello, Swoon Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I am super excited because we are going to be talking about Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan. Christmas comes early, far too early to McCready's little old town bookshop in Edinburgh. It's summer, but an American production company has decided that McCready's is the perfect location to film a very cheesy Christmas movie. After all, who can resist the charmingly narrow historic street with the Victorian graystone buildings and the warmly lit windows? Carmen Hogan, the bookshop's manager, is amused and a bit horrified by the goings-on, but the money from the studio is too good to pass up. And she uses the little windfall from filming to fend off a buyout offer from an obnoxious millionaire who just wants to turn McCready's into a crappy souvenir shop. Still reeling from a breakup, Carmen's not particularly looking forward to the holidays. But just as the snow begins to fall and the lights of Christmas blink on, all sorts of lovely new possibilities present themselves, both for McCready's and for Carmen herself. We have Jenny on the show today, and I'm super excited about that. Welcome, Jenny. Hi there. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here today. So tell us a little bit about the the setup for Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop. Uh, so the, I first started writing about bookshops in Edinburgh, uh, really, when we were in lockdown, and we had a very unusually snowy Christmas. It doesn't normally snow here at Christmas. It normally snows here at Easter. And um, it was just so gorgeous and so empty and so kind of magical that I knew uh, that I really wanted to write about that. Uh, and that was the first uh, bookshop book. And now this is the second in the same series. That's wonderful. So tell us a little about the plot for uh, Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop. Well, I mean, essentially, it's about how difficult it is to run an independent bookshop, yeah. <laughs> whatever time of the year it is. Uh, and getting harder every day and really about the communities of, of small independence because I think these kinds of shops tend to be very supportive of one another because mm -hmm. everyone understands that it is very it, you know that it's difficult to do uh, but that it's worthwhile doing it so it's a kind of love story really to, to bookshops and the people that run them. I, I love that. So one of the things that's uh, that I found really interesting is that early in the book, an American production company is filming a show in the area and Carmen, who is running the bookshop, is, you know, is dealing with all of that. Can you go into that a little bit more? Oh, I'm poking some gentle fun. I do hope you don't mind. No. <laughs> but how, we, we love it. <laughs> we, there, there is often a kind of view of Scotland that we wouldn't necessarily tally with the, the reality of living here, which is that we're all either kind of, you know, constantly being murderous and addicted to heroin or that it's all very kind of jolly peasant stuff. Um, and so it's they're kind of making a film about that and they get lots of things wrong in my case to get things wrong about Scotland I'm sure when you see films and TV shows <laughs> set in the time where you come from you can't believe how much they get wrong and, and how completely ignorant they are so it's you know it's everybody knows the phenomenon but it was fun there was a particular Netflix film last year called A Castle for Christmas that was a <laughs> massive sense with Brooke Shields 
I, I uh, actually I know the per I know the Hollywood film agent who sold that book to Netflix and the shoot I, apparently was quite an imp- had quite an impact on the town. So sorry, you so you had it was hilarious. It was the funniest thing and everybody watched it and we all loved it, but oh my goodness, it was a, a kind of fundamental misunderstanding of literally everything <laughs> that we could uh, but we enjoyed it um thoroughly. Well, I feel like in, you know, in our world, in, in like romance world, um, that Scotland is mostly known for big hunky men with kilts, <laughs> right? I mean, that's what it's like in our, in our minds as Americans, it's all just these. There, there is an element, well, the point, it depends where you go, because the West coast of Scotland uh, and a lot of the Highlands is, is kind of Scots-Irish and um, people tend to be a little shorter and have red hair. Right. On the east coast, where all the Vikings came, people are bigger and more Scandinavian, and so there's more kind of. So uh, it it depends a little <laughs> on where you are. The the one thing I will say about the Highlands and Islands is that um, a lot of the jobs up there are oil, timber, fisheries. Uh, they're, they're very ma- you know tree husbands, they're very masculine, masculine jobs. So there are a lot of. Funnily enough, um, I'm watching um, Northern, that old show Northern Exposure at the moment with the children. Oh, I love that show. And I didn't know show. if they would like it because I loved it and they are loving it, which is brilliant. But a lot of the kind of Alaska jokes are you could very much kind of point at like, quite a lot of Scotland. But there's one point where Joel Fleischman breaks up with his fiance and he's like, I'm going to find another woman. And it's just like, where <laughs> <laughs> well here are so, the three you can choose from yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah. so it, it can be a little bit like that so if you want to find a man the highlands is a fantastic place to come and do it <laughs> uh, I, I can't promise they're going to be six foot four no can you what, what's the percentage of them wearing kilts like what would you what's the over under like 30 percent chance 10 percent 80 well, I mean, think? everyone's got a kilt for, you know, if you if you have a DJ for going to a fancy party or if you have a suit for going to a wedding, then uh, our equivalent here is most men will either own or certainly rent their own kilts. You know, my yeah. husband, my children have all got one. Most people have got one or got access to one. So at some point, then, yes, absolutely. <laughs> on a, <laughs> there are people that wear them on a daily basis. Are frankly are are kind of showing off. You want to be a little careful. Little, a little bit. That's the that is the fantasy I think for a lot of American women is that those guys are out there just doing their forestry work or working on the oil <laughs> rig. Wear the kilt. <laughs> like oh, know. I tell you what, you want you want to take your life in your hands if you before you go for a rigger. Now the oil rig community is going to come for me. I do love them dearly, but not for the faint hours. The, well, and you know what? It's uh, just as a safety issue. You probably want everything more, let's say, secured <laughs> before you start doing, you know, working with a chainsaw or on a on an oil rig. So I did have a question about you. You've written a number of books that take place in a bookshop. You've got the Christmas bookshop, the bookshop on the corner, bookshop on the on the shore, which I have not read yet, but I'm definitely going to because it combines my two favorite things bookshops and the beach and I go oh those things together those are magical why why do you think that's such a magical setting for you oh I mean all writers are just readers really we're just well, readers one step to the left I mean there's no it's simply the nearest professional job you can do so you know and if you the other thing with writers and with most heavy readers is unless you're extremely lucky, you almost certainly didn't have access to as many books as you would have liked. Right. During your childhood, you were strongly reliant on libraries. Um, so the idea of having a, a, you know, a new book whenever you wanted one, when you consider how much children read, um, was kind of a, a little bit out of the question. So there's that element of it that they're incredibly, uh, or they certainly were aspirational to us in children. But also there is that, you know, astonishing difficulty of getting out of a bookshop without finding something that you think will be interesting. Right. I I can never leave without buying at least one thing and usually 17 things. So yes, I, I, I think, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, to- I totally, totally feel that. All right. So I have to ask this question. Your bio says that you live in a Scottish castle. How did that happen? 
<laughs> well, it's quite it's quite a little one. <laughs> <laughs> Does that matter? You live in a castle. How awesome I know. Is that? I, well, I mean, there, we do have quite a lot of them, and I, 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 you know, I would. It's about because of where it is, you could probably pay about the same amount of money for one and a half bedrooms in New York. You know, so it's it's kind of um, yeah. No, we just fell in love with it. It's, it is very small. But it's really, really, really beautiful. You can see if you follow my Instagram, you can see pictures of it through the seasons and the <sighs> all the roses are just about gone. We had more plums than we know what to do with. And oh, I love it's, that. Um, it's oh a really gosh. happy place well, for us. For our listeners who are listening on Apple or Spotify or one of the other streaming channels, you might want to check out uh, the YouTube video of this podcast because we are going to be popping up some of those pictures of Jenny's beautiful castle. I'm so very excited about that. So I have to say, I have to tell you this, my ancestors also lived in some beautiful castles in Scotland because I am a descendant of um, James Stewart all the way from Robert the Bruce all the way through wow James five I think okay. and then I and then I and then I'm off the then I'm out of the club but yeah I know right so this is funny my mother uh, we found out uh, sort of by accident that we had this um, through my mother's father this line to the to the Scottish throne that doesn't really exist anymore and we always had this tradition every year that we would have this girls weekend my mom and my niece and my daughter and myself would just spend the whole weekend doing girly stuff and we just happened to find this out just a few weeks before girls weekend so we wore tiaras for the entire weekend and we went around nighting at pretty much everybody we met at the, <laughs> at the beach it was like you know we live in a CSA Key, Florida, which is a very uh, touristy area. So it was it was Memorial Day. We had a ton of people all around. But, you know, we're eating pancakes and nighting people. And we just had like such a blast with it. And I always have a tiara in somewhere in my office. I don't know if you can see it back there. Oh, you can't. It's back there, but you can't see it. So I love I love that you live in a real life castle. I think that is a and a castle kind of by the sea, which is kind of cool. So really fascinating. Every week on While You Are Reading, my favorite uh, contemporary romance authors and I talk about book recommendations, right? We trade book recommendations. They tell me what they think I'd like. I tell them what I think they'd like. And everybody's TBR pile gets a whole lot bigger. So for this segment, would you like to go first? What book are you recommending for me? Um, sure. I. It's been quite controversial, but I really enjoyed Everything's Fine. Oh, Cecilia Rabbis. Are you, are you aware of it? I know it's quite a bit. I have, I have not read it yet, but it is on my aforementioned it's, giant TBR pile. So it's, yeah. it's, it's um, a, a, a white, a, a black girl who falls in love with a white right wing boy. But the thing is, I possibly because I'm slightly removed from right. the, the politicization element of it, I found it very, very funny. And very, very charming. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I thought it was very, very good. Really excellent reading. Well, I'm, it's funny. I was just reading an article in the New York Times the other day about how right wing boys are having some dating trouble that there are. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> I know, shocker, but that there are fewer right wing ladies and, and that they tend to sort of swing the other way, especially when they're young. So I think that's a fascinating idea for um, a fascinating premise for a book. Uh, and I have heard such great things about everything's fine. I mean, just it. And I know there is some controversy for sure. But in yeah. the U.S. right now, there's controversy about my I have a very strong sense, particularly for young female writers mm -hmm. that life can be extremely difficult in a way irritatingly that it doesn't seem to be for young male writers almost as if almost <laughs> those huh. things are connected <laughs> um so yes I really anybody that's you know going at it as a debut novelist good luck um yeah uh, to you uh but um yeah I yeah I it's really 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 very good I think that, well, thank you so much for that recommendation. I, I think that's true in many ways for just women in any profession, but especially a sort of public one where you're putting your creative work out into the world. And well, sometimes for, for some people that feels like you're inviting, 
you know, criticism. And I think it's very interesting that when you were talking about right wing men having trouble dating, and I get it because, you know, if you're not a right wing woman, you don't necessarily want everything that comes with that. But it also feels that the left wing will absolutely go for the exact same woman. Yeah. Um, you know, so you <laughs> right. caught in a I, movement. Um, so, yes. <laughs> I know. So let's talk about something less controversial. Let's do. I know. Do you want another rec from me or are you going to? I do. I'll I'll take another recommendation for you. Absolutely. It's very much not. It's very much an anti-romance, but I guess, but and I I think everyone has probably read it. But if you did not read The Guest this summer, the Emma Klein, I think you probably ought to. Oh, I, you know what I have, um, I have not read that book yet, but I really want to, I actually ended up with COVID over the summer and was sick, like just asleep and miserable in bed for like six weeks. So I have not, I haven't read anything over this. I mean, I haven't read much over the summer. So I, um, but I definitely want to read that. So you give me two really great, uh, recommendations. That's absolutely fantastic. So for you, I wanted to recommend Spill the Sweet Tea by Lyra Parrish, who is really a, yeah, really fun and just delightful writer, but it takes place in a Texas bookshop. And there are some similar, it's a, obviously it's a completely different book. Hers kind of is more of a romantic comedy and it has similar sort of ideas and themes and even just down to the setting of the bookshop and a planned expansion. So I have to tell you that the, the blurb contains the phrase, can he hang up his spurs? <laughs> Which is giving me some concerns at this point. <laughs> I know. Well, it is a Texas romance. It's a very yeah. uh, fun sort of small town romance. So okay, it's going on the list. All right. Yeah. On its way. Thank you. But I loved it. And the author, uh, Lara Parrish. Oh, my God. The one after it's called Butter My Biscuit. <laughs> Well, it's a very Southern thing, right? Okay. <laughs> we, so like, you know, when we talk about like spill the tea, that means like, tell me, tell me the gossip, what's happening. Well, that, that I know. Right. The, the sweet thing. tea is that, like, you're more likely if you're anywhere in the South to mm-hmm. have sweet tea, which is pre-sweetened tea with an, an old school sweet tea is sweetened with sugar, like during the process when you're making the tea. So it's not like you just add it in later. That's probably horrifying for you. Like as, as a person in the UK, I don't, I actually don't know very much about the tea drinking ha- habits of Scotland. What are Re- reasonably widespread? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So is, is it a, pretty akin to England or not quite as much? Yeah, or? no, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Milk and two sugars is pretty straightforward. Okay. So it is important in the South tea, this idea of tea, but it's, but it is, like I said, usually um, drunk cold and highly sweetened, which makes it extra delicious. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. Fantastic. I absolutely love that. Thank you very much for, uh, for that. Uh, Swoonies, this is your lucky day. uh, As we do every week here on while you were reading we are going to be giving away a copy of Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop. If you would like to enter the, to win, you have until next Friday and you can just click the link down in the show notes below or uh, go to whileyouareading.com and enter there. Good luck. We're pulling for you. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. This has been just absolutely fantastic. Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop is going to be in stores in the U.S. on October 10th and in stores in the U.K. on October 15th. And we are all looking forward to that because this book was absolutely delightful. I cannot thank you enough for being here. And if you guys want to win a copy, just be be sure to uh, enter at whileyouareading.com and I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Good news, Swin Squad. If you love steamy hockey romantic comedies, you are going to be happy to know that The Cutting Edge by yours truly, Lisa Daly, is in stores now. So The Cutting Edge is a laugh out loud hockey romantic comedy perfect for fans of Helena Hunting, Hannah Grace, and Pippa Grant. Logan Rivers is a star pro hockey player for the St. Pete Slashers, and he is in a slump. He hasn't scored in three games, and it's really starting to freak him out. Enter Cook who strikes a deal with an assistant coach to be Logan's lucky charm in order to pay off her training expenses as an Olympic figure skater. Everything's looking up for both of them. She's almost got her debt paid off. The slashers are on a winning streak. There's only one problem. 
She doesn't know how to tell him she's been lying to him the whole time. If she can just keep her secret until the playoffs are over. The Cutting Edge is in stores now and free to read on Kindle Unlimited. Will you be my book boyfriend? So here on While You're Reading, we only review books that we absolutely love. If it's on the show, it's a five-star book. But we also give the book boyfriend a keeper rating, which is basically my totally arbitrary thought process on whether or not I would actually date this imaginary hero in real life if I were single, which I am not. Okay, so for me, Oak makes a really good book boyfriend because one, he's very steady and reliable. Two, when he makes a mistake, he actually tries to own up to it. And three, as all good book boyfriends are, he is completely subject to the magic of Christmas. Let's talk tropes. Okay, so Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop is packed with a bunch of delightful holiday tropes. We've got second chance romance, found family, tacky Americans in a foreign land, which is one of my personal favorites, and the magic of Christmas to make everybody fall madly in love. Okay, Swoonies, it's your lucky day. As we do every week here on While You Were Reading, we're giving away a copy of Midnight at the Christmas Bookshop to a lucky winner this week. So to enter, you're just going to head on over to whileyouareading.com or you can click the link in the show notes below. Good luck. 